just pearly things versus Abba and preach. Didn't see this one coming. Guys, listen, Abba and Preach recently uploaded a video uh, entitled, I want smoke with Abba and preach. Why are these alpha males so fragile at just pearly things? Now, I got this notification on my phone and I took a look at it and I'm just like, wait a minute, what's, <laughs> what's going on here? Apparently there was a video that Abba and Preach uploaded about three to four weeks ago or something like that, where they directly responded to some words via just pearly things in a conversation with Hafiz. If this was Pearl's world, I'd get rid of birth control. I'd ban it, but I, that'll never happen. A lot but of men won't this, like that. If this... A lot of the men, that's my guy right here. He said, hell no. He said, I'm going to get rid of that, baby. Yeah, if this, is, if this is Pearl's world, I'd ban birth control. Yeah, I, I think that's the root of all evil. Uh, and like... and I'd actually go further. I'd go further. Go ahead. But, but say I'm, it. I'm kind of say extreme. It. Say it. I, I, don't, I, don't, say I don't think it. women should vote. Huh? I don't think women should vote. Lord Jesus, keep on going. <laughs> yeah, no it. women, you can't vote. No birth control. Yeah. Keep it going. Yeah, no, because it's always freedom without responsibility. And I so, love like, it. The women reason... should not vote. No, but, Pearly but said it you, herself. I'll tell you why, though. I'll tell you why. Because it's freedom without responsibility. I love and before this. women, like, the, the con like I believe in consequences for your decision. So the men know if they vote someone batshit crazy into power, you guys get drafted. We don't. Women decide elections where 55% of the population. I think if we want to vote, equally draft us. Y'all want equality. And personally, I don't want to get drafted, so I'll be in the kitchen. So within their response, which I actually did not see, they began to intellectually take apart some of the things that she was saying and why. So now a month later, there's a young brother that's a part of the Just Pearly Things network that kind of went on a diatribe to try to defend just pearly things and talking about all this smoke, but really didn't say much of anything. Are we addressing the elephant in the room? Which is what? Huh? Um, listen, oh, I'll light up the internet, and I'll, I'll light up, I'll light up, I'll light up, I'll light up the internet. Please address the elephant. I'm, okay, let me, let me address it. Let me address a little bit of it. You get me? Just pearly things, yeah? Just pearly things is a network, yeah? So when you... When you tag just pearly things, just know you're coming for everyone on the on the show with all our views combined. Yeah, Abba and preach. Yeah, these guys. Oh my god. Yeah, no, like uh, should I? Should I? <laughs> all right. <laughs> this, this, this is left the field, but go on. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, yeah. This is the elephant in the room. Yeah, this is the, this is the elephant in the room because do you know what they're doing? They've gone around, yeah, and my man has basically said you're misogynistic. So a, ma a man called a woman misogynistic because she because mm. she's because you know what i'm trying to say and uh i mean they say going to say divorce but keep going bro no 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 we're going we're going to get them we're going to get them listen you've sat down and you've ate off just pearly things by tagging us yeah and your production is not our production our production is big out here you get me we do we have guests coming in we have big sets arcs blessing you know what i'm saying we have, we have stuff we go we go we go outside we put people in, in black people's pockets, yeah? So for two guys from wherever you lot from, because it's not from Haiti, because if it was from Haiti, you would have spoke about it, yeah? You would have spoke about what's going on in Haiti, but it don't sound like that. Sound like you're from Upsa. So listen, let me say something to you two guys here. So he's addressing the elephant in the room. Just probably thinks it's like, really, is this the elephant in the room? And he's coming across as like defending, and he's talking about all of this smoke, which to me in America, I don't know what it means in the UK, but if you say I have smoke with you online, it means that you want to see that person right in front of you to handle it and settle it like men, which to a degree I find exceptionally crazy because they're critiquing just pearly things and the things that she's saying, irrespective of being a part of a network or this, that, and the third, it doesn't even matter. It's just critique at the end of the day. It's okay as a public figure, because that's what you are when you sign up for this and you get to the numbers of a just pearly things. For example, to have people critique based off of the things that they are saying because you were signing up for that. And I think it's a great thing because there's no ideas out here that should go unchecked in the marketplace of public information or public content you have your ideas we could throw it up in the air i have my ideas we could throw it up in the air and then we can let the people around us decide and just pearly things said something that is considered radical so i think it's completely fair game that then it deserves some feedback and or some critique but let's watch how abba and preach <laughs> respond to this gentleman right here Smoke for you look, bro. but bro, bro finish your sentences so we can actually understand what the f <laughs> I got smoke for you. I got smoke. You lot, you got, you lot of problem. I got smoke for you. I got smoke for you. I got bro, smoke for bro, you, bro, bro, bro. It's not a thing, and I, and I, and I can. From one, <laughs> there's no DJ involved. Why one, are you scratching and rewinding my for dude? For one, for one man with a speech impediment to another, bro. Okay, calm, calm down and finish your point. 
Like, I don't even know what this is about. You know what he said last video? You cannot say you guys are red pill, you guys are not about misogyny, and also saying you want to remove women's ability to vote and have access to birth control. That's it. Everyone go pay you as a misogynist. If you want to be taken seriously in this public sphere, you can't say you want to take away people's basic fundamental rights. That's it! That was the entire point of the fucking even, video. Even which I think, if you're watching, you probably would agree. I don't think you can really go out here and claim you're not a racist person and also say you want to remove black people's ability to vote or black people's ability to have birth control or have premarital sex. Like, you're just not gonna win that argument. I think what Abba just said right here is really important, but I think it's slightly off. What he's insinuating here is that you can't say that you're not misogynistic if you also say that women should not be allowed to vote. When you look up the definition of misogyny, it is saying that you think as a man that you are better as a woman. The argument that just Pearly Things is saying is saying, well, if you want complete equality, then you should be in a draft as well. And until you are allowed in the draft, then you should have your right to vote taken away. Two different arguments, but I can see how they can get misconstrued. So she's not saying women should not be allowed to vote because men are better. She's saying make everything equal, including the draft, and until you do, women should not be allowed to vote, which I do think is a very extreme conclusion. So once out of the coin, I get how it cannot be interpreted as misogynistic, but at the same time, I can understand how people can feel like it's misogynistic. But although I don't think it's misogynistic, it is too extreme. What is it that I mean by that? Judging on whether or not a woman should vote at all, just based off of being allowed into the draft, I think is a bit intellectually short-sighted. And the reason is, is because it doesn't address the other side. The other side being why it might be a bad idea to allow women into the draft. Right, we do have the data from the lowered standards. Okay. Two times the bone fracture okay. rates, right? 65% uh, higher physical disability discharge rates. Okay. For every percentage point you increase okay. uh, a squad of police with women, mm -hmm. every percentage point of women that you add to it, the chances of them being the victim of violence, all the entire squad goes up 20%. So we don't have the real world data of those elite capable women. Okay. Uh, but if we did return to those standards and the data would bear out that they were just as capable, I would have no problem. So if we allow women to do these things, it would inherently be a higher cost and a higher risk in aggregate to those armed forces. So when you include women into armed services in mass and in general, the cost, including the cost of injury or the cost to that platoon or that squadron or the, even that organization for combat roles goes up. So while I do agree that some degrees of equality have to be assessed when we talk about individual rights as it complements gender roles in society today, I also don't think that women should have the right to vote taken away until they are able to apply for something or get drafted into something that increases the risk to the country. Now, I think this part of the conversation is particularly interesting because Abba brings up this idea of why, and this is quoted within their chapter title, why are black men so fragile online? Pay attention to Preacher's response right here. Black dudes online constantly have to overcompensate for their masculinity and have to pretend they're way tougher than they actually are just to feel comfortable online. And I'll also say this. I feel like they only have this kind of energy for other black men or black women, but they don't talk to people from other groups this way. And it's cringe. Um, I think you're right. And we had that discussion uh, before. And it was not really a discussion. It was really just a comment. And I understand exactly what the fuck he was talking about. Cause we did a video at some point and then it was like, and it was six months after the Fresh and Fit tobacco thing, yeah. right? And then I was still referencing the fight cause I was still pissed off, right? <clears throat> and we did that video and I mentioned it and you still, you just turned to me and you looked at me and you said, like, you still on this shit? Man, that's, I don't remember if you remember that shit. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I, I edit that out. I know you did. Okay. Yeah, I know you yeah, did. Yeah, I remember what I said that. But you're like. Side note, I think that it's very impactful uh, that they have a degree of a friendship, at least at this point, where they can continue to check each other. You know, there's times as well where, you know, <laughs> I felt as though I've gone a little bit too far. I think putting people in your corner that continue to question your actions or your behaviors and can do it from a perspective of looking out for your best interest is a super value add. Let's continue though. 
you still on this shit, man? Man, that's corny. And I kind of understood exactly, and I kind of self-reflected of what it is, and then I had to go back to me and why I was so pissed and so livid. And I, it made me question myself. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Like about this whole thing, and it made me question about what happened and how cool and all that and stuff like that. And what you're talking about right there, what we're talking about, we have to always move like we're, we're, we got to assert our masculinity and stuff like that. It's a bit about, remember the beginning of uh, the, the, the opening monologue of uh, the movie Baby Boy? Yes. You remember that shit? That. When he's talking about how the black man's been a baby. Yeah. When we talk about our house, we talk about a crib. Yeah. Uh, infantilizing. We're infantilizing everything. So we often have to show that we are, that, that monologue, that monologue is really, it stayed with me. I didn't really comprehend with it. And, and later on, I kind of understood it. And then like more the depth of it. And that's really what it is. The society has done that to us, which is uh, really brought us to the point of a baby and stuff like that. And the only thing that we kind of have to do and we scream is really just assert our manhood. Big hack in the building. You know what I mean? That's yeah, that's yeah. that. Yeah. That's that's where we that's gotta from. We got to puff off our chest. We got to puff off our chest. We have to show that we're men. We're handling biz. And oftentimes, handling biz, the way we see it, because, of course, there's the hood mentality and stuff like that. And you're like, yeah, we got to show this and that and that. Is you have, you have to, yeah, has to go with violence. I got, the fact that you murk someone or you... We not glorify someone that yeah we glorify that because the fact that you murked that is that you took power over someone you know what i mean and it's and, and, and it's and that's that's how it's translated in south and time so that time it made me reflect and that's why i was like you know what fuck this shit yeah let me just drop that shit let me just eh, i'm not even gonna fucking reference that and that's where this is from yeah so it's immature this thing immature. right here you see this guy i don't even know if he knows what he's pissed about. But he can't put it in words. And the way he puts it in words doesn't really make sense. He knows there's that feeling where he's pissed off and shit like that. And he wants to come at us. He wants, I got bare smoke. I got bare smoke. Bro, I don't even know what that means. What you gonna do? You gonna come to Canada and do some shit? What, 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 what are you gonna do? I think what he's saying, and I understand, he's probably thinking like, I felt like my girl got attacked by these people. Yeah. And... She's my people, mm -hmm. and I don't want to see her hurt, so I want to protect her. Yeah. These men do, 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 do reviews in front of a camera and, a, and an iPhone. Don't don't try it, bro. Don't compare what Pearl does to what you lot do. Come on, come people on. People come on this show, and they could tell their views all day, every day, and no one stopped them. Pearl gives them equal time to talk. So if this is, goes out to even girls out there that try to talk crap and follow this misogynistic crap. You don't know what misogynistic means, bro. You're on the mis mis misantry stuff, yeah? That's what you lot do, bro. <laughs> I'll light up the internet, bro. I'll light them up, bro. Listen, you lot are spreading rumors and lies and clipping things. D don't watch that. Girls come on here every single day when we got shows on and talk madness, the most madness, and expect not to get clips, bro. You lot will get clips if you talk madness, bro. Guys, listen to me. At the base level, I understand the positions and the points that he's trying to say. Essentially, he's saying, because we're a part of this network, we're going to ride, and then therefore, I have smoke for you. And then also, too, she just probably thinks as a young 26-year-old woman, she makes mistakes, da-da-da, which it in itself is a bit of a contradictory statement, because are you saying that she knows what she's saying, and she's saying it, versus don't come at her because she's young and 26, and da-da-da. And I think, like, at 26 years old, whatever you say, she'll be God gospel at that point like yeah you're not going to know the same amount of things at 36 but at the same time if you're on a public platform you got to be able to say your points and then ride true within those points she ain't a baby and now with her reach she is up for criticism and just because i and preach is a much larger channel does not allow them to be able to come at her as a content creator but you my friend trying to attack the points 
in not defending her because of her particular position, but defending her because, oh, women say things at time to time is exactly the white knight behavior that we don't need in this particular space. I think we all should be up for critique and as well as criticism. And this is one of the mantras that I speak on the channel is that I never wanna be in an echo chamber. I never wanna be in a space where no one else has an argument against some of the things that I am saying because I think it makes us bigger, better, faster, stronger, the more that we can talk about where we might be wrong. And I guarantee you now that Just Pearly Things has had pushback regarding those particular words, it's probably given an opportunity to go back, reassess the thoughts and maybe articulate it in a way that's a little bit more valuable to the audiences that would be value add for them to hear. But you know what I actually think is that part of the issue within content creation in general is that like your trajectory of growth is increased the more polarizing that you are. YouTube has made it extremely clear of what the limits are through the recent bannings that we've talked about before on this channel. But then also too, if you edge on that degree of polarity, then it is much easier for like an ABBA and a preach to be able to take components of things that you said and then make content off of that. So like, for example, me, I've always edged on the degree of balance within the content that I have made, but I can't think of one content creator that has ever called me out regarding the things that I've said on this channel, even though they know specifically that I do content for men in general. The only ones that try to call me out, or at least the ones that I've seen, are the ones they'll rely on that hobbit and attacks to be like, yo, look at his bug eyes, or look at his hair, or you know what I'm saying, look at his lip. But should they try to address my points, they find it a lot more harder because they often find that they would agree with those points. So it's almost like as a content creator, it would behoove you to be a little bit more on the polarizing end because then an ama and a preach will call you out and for better or for worse, will get you the push within the algorithm that you may not have had before. And then ama and preach went and had this discussion in reference to black culture. And I think it was really interesting the points that preach brought up. The reason why black men online result to violence is the same way that black men in the streets result to more violence. It is deeply rooted and embedded within black culture. Now, this doesn't mean that white people don't fight. It doesn't mean that <laughs> online violence between, you know, white people, they, it starts online, then, then it goes out into the real world. It doesn't, that happens as well. Trust me, I went to Penn State University. We had internet back then, even though it was a little bit, <laughs> it was a little bit of a long time ago, but I've seen some brouhaha's, you understand me up there. And in fact, I've seen more fights at that school between white people than black people. Shout out to Penn State, it's an amazing institution. I love my alma mater. I'm just talking about the things that I've seen up on campus, you understand what I'm saying? So anyway, within the culture, one of which is matriarchal led due to a fatherless culture, have many of the emotionalities casted down to these young men who think that it's cool to just respond with violence, specifically to those that look like you. I find it so odd and so interesting that we've had so many black rappers die, whether it be from takeoff to PMB Rock to Pop Smoke to XXX Tentacion and when it was discovered that it was a black assailant, there wasn't riots in the streets as when someone kneeled on George Floyd's neck. Why does one get looting and rioting and the other one does it will be beyond me. But I think that it demonstrates that there's a degree of acceptability when it comes to black men hurting other black men. Yet the degrees and levels of trauma as established by many of the victimhood issues within our society today get brought to the forefront when it is black man attacked by white officer. You know, it's actually something when I think about being an influencer in the space and having so many uh, black men that look at my content that I seek to change. And it's often something that I would talk about Kevin Samuels with. That's why he was such a proponent on anti-beef and he never responded to anybody that talked ill on his name. And that's why you haven't seen me in beefs as well, even though I've seen people talked ill on my name. And I think it's important that men that are in leadership positions begin to set that example. Because if our example is that of which is immediately accessible via on Twitter, the internet, or via our syndicated media, then it's an uphill battle towards maturity that we will never have. So to end off this conversation, I think that the correlation towards voting rights and the obligation for you to fight in war, fight on the battlefield, is indeed an extreme statement. Not misogynistic, but radical 
and extreme. And most of the people that hear a statement like that, the immediate next thought is, you're trying to take my rights away. Therefore, I feel that you are misogynistic. But hey, I'd love to hear a debate actually between just pearly things if she really continues to believe that statement, as well as ABBA. They can put their both their issues or thoughts in or on the table, and you know, we just look at to see who's more right and who's more wrong. Because I think at the end of the day, all of these points are up for critique. Questions, comments, concerns? Y'all already know what to do. Me tutorials and reviews at gmail.com. Do you guys agree with the points that I put in this particular video? If you do agree or you do not agree, let me know down in the comment box down below so we continue to get these conversations popping. I think conversations like this are very much needed within the space. So I appreciate being able to dissect these different things so we can come to a meeting of the minds of how we can put these ideologies forward. Until next time, YouTube.